What's up, people? This is Brewing Daddy. We are about to brew up another batch of one gallon beer recipe from Northern Brewer. And this time around, we're gonna be doing a German blonde. Man, I do love blondes. <laughs> Don't tell my wife, though. Uh, so let's see what we got here. This looks like it's gonna be a pretty simple recipe. So we got some blonde ale grains. Fizz drops for the bottom. Our brewer's yeast, American ale. Looks like we only have one hops and that's gonna be the German pearl. We have our steeping bag for the blonde ale grains. We have some, I may be pronouncing this wrong, but Brees is what I'm assuming it's from how it's pronounced. Pills and light dried malt extract. If I'm wrong, please correct me. And then we have our instructions. This is a pretty simple brew. Not a whole lot of hops, uh, not a whole lot of ingredients. So this one's gonna be pretty easy, probably fun and probably taste great. All right, so we're gonna get the pot hot and get it brewing. We're getting the pot hot. We got our propane on. We already got a half gallon in our pot. We're gonna put in another gallon. This is faucet water that was filtered through my Brita water filter. So we've been trying it out. We haven't tasted any brews yet from it, but uh, hopefully they're gonna be quite tasty. We shall find out. This is a very simple recipe. You know, we already showed you the ingredients, but this is pretty much it besides the fizz drops. There's only one hop addition. It goes in right at the beginning. Same time as our dried malt extract, and uh, then we, we're gonna steep our grains here. Um, we're gonna get that going right now because our water is already up to almost 120 degrees. It's going up fast. So we'll get these in there. This one, this particular recipe I have never brewed. This is actually one of the simpler recipes I've ever done. I've done some Pilsners before that were pretty simple. This one's very simple. There's not many steps in it at all. Matter of fact, this would probably be a bit good beginner beer. Um, very little grain, but it does have it. Now this gets steeped in uh, our water here for 10 minutes. So we're gonna moisten this just to get it to uh, sink down in our pot good. And then we'll clip it on. We got a little chip clip here we're gonna use. It just seems to work good to hold everything in place. So we're good now. I said our water's right at 120 and it's heating up. We got our burner going. So we'll be back once we uh, steep this. I got to set the timer for 10 minutes. Our timer just went off and our bag's been in there 10 minutes. Our temperature has not went up a whole lot. We're gonna have to crank up our temperature here in a minute. These grains are obviously not for color. They're more for uh, flavor. Because they didn't put any color into our water here at all. And they've sat in here at 106 degrees for 10 minutes. So <clears throat> go ahead and get them out. Actually, what's coming off of them looks more like a milky color than anything. Not a whole lot of anything in them. All right, so we're gonna turn up the heat, get this up to a boil, and then we'll put in our dried malt extract and our hops addition. Very close to a boil now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in our dried malt extract. And I will stir this in as I pour it. This stuff you got to be real careful with the uh, foaming. So you want to watch your heat. 
she will get some foam. It's best to do it gradually. I always try to do mine right before the boiling point. You're going to get a lot of foam that's normal. But what you want to do is just keep steering it. Because it gets clumpy and uh, very foamy. So just keep steering it. You may have to reduce your heat once your boil starts. If you're going to have a boil over, it's normally going to be with this stuff. You just want to keep a close eye on it. At least for the first few minutes. Until you get your, your rolling boil established. And while we wait, we're going to hydrate. And we got a Sierra Madre here. Oh, oh shit. I was saying you gotta watch it because even at a controlled temperature you gotta watch it okay well that was interesting <laughs> exactly what I told you not to do I did so my first boil over in quite a while maybe three or four months but anyways all right so <laughs> Kind of embarrassing, but hey, that's okay. It's YouTube. Let's make the best of it. It's not the end of the world. My beer is still good. <laughs> but anyways, we got to get our pearl hops in. Um, I actually had to cut the heat because of the boil over. Uh, this is a two-gallon pot, and you know I have like a gallon and a quarter gallon and a half in it, so it only leaves about a half a gallon to three quarters space. So you really have to be careful with this one. I love this pot though, because it, it's just great. I never have issues with like burning or anything like that. But uh, sometimes you get a bowl over. Usually I can control it, but this time it just took off. Once you get it, once you get to that point, you usually don't have any more problems. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get our German Pearl Hops in after that eventful moment. And we'll stir those in. I can tell right now, and of course, this is a blonde. It's going to be super, super light. It's going to be super, super, super light. And you can tell right there. I don't know if you can see the color good, but it's going to be a very clear, very light colored beer. I'm sure, it'll be tasty. But now my foam's gone, so that, that's the main thing. You get past that foamy part and you're okay. Um, we got our timer running, we got 39 minutes left. There's no more hop additions. This is a simple beer to make. Just the uh, big trick here is keeping your foam at the initial bo boiling point, keeping your foam down and not having to boil over. Everything that was coming out of my pot was actually foam. It wasn't, there wasn't any uh, actual liquid itself coming out, but I think we're good now. We're just gonna ease it up to a boil. I got the burner set pretty low. I did have a little bit higher. I probably should know better, but it's okay. It didn't end the world and we're okay. So as I was saying, while we wait, we're gonna hydrate. And this is a Sierra Madre that I'm enjoying. And there's our boil. There's a slow rolling boil now. Awesome. So. We'll be back when it's time to chill this one and uh, put it in the fermenter. And right now we got a fermenter sitting off to the side, some sanitizer in it. We got the airlock, the plug, and the scissors there, and our yeast packet. So we're gonna be ready to go. All right, let's enjoy this. Okay, we got uh, 13 minutes left in our boil. Everything's going smoothly after our little fiasco with the overboil. 
Everything looks great. Stirring it occasionally. Um, already got our confirmator drained with our sanitizer out of it, and then we got everything air drying that's been sanitized. And we got some sanitizer inside our airlock here. So, 13 minutes, we're going to cut the heat, and then we're going to put this in an ice bath, and we will transfer it to our fermenter. Our timer's went off, so we are going to cut the heat, and we are going to get this in an ice bath. All right, so we've got an ice bath here. I'll go ahead and get it all iced up. I'm gonna let that sit. And it should cool down here, maybe 30 minutes or so and we'll be able to transfer it into our fermenter once it's cooled off. So our wort is cooled and we're gonna transfer it into our fermenter. is pretty clean. Gonna leave a little bit of the sludge. There's not much. Oh, there is. We're gonna leave it behind. All right, so we're gonna put our yeast in. We sanitize our pack and our scissors. set so this is gonna sit in a cool around 70 degree room with uh, very limited light and in two weeks we'll be ready to bottle this one 